Hey folks, Eli here. It's been a little while, so I'm gonna start off today as I get back into the swing of these things with a simple topic being CSS modules, specifically CSS modules in React. In React, which is one of the big hot frameworks that a lot of new developers wanna learn because it's a really good way to break into front end development, there is a couple different ways you can implement styling. Typically, I prefer CSS modules over other types because it avoids a couple issues with vanilla CSS, but doesn't add the extra complexity of CSS in JavaScript or in JSON. And so we're gonna talk about what the problems it helps avoid are and also how to implement it in your code today. So to start out, I have an application that's built here. It's a super simple example application that has two different components that are essentially just dummy components. It's a material UI paper with a button inside of it that are here to demonstrate what the primary issue with just importing vanilla CSS into your React project is. Jumping over to the code, we see a very familiar app.js file. It's very familiar to anyone that's used to create React app script before. We're gonna see the two components listed down below here, which is instantiating them on that view that we just saw. Jumping over to the components, super basic. We have a paper with a grid system inside of it. We have some text and we have a button inside of each. So coming over to the second one, essentially it's a clone of the first. We see the same kind of setup inside this file. I wanna come over to how the paper itself is actually styled. So if we look at our CSS file inside the component directory, we see example paper as our description for this component. Now example paper is doing a couple things with margins and width and centering and just adjusting how the component is viewed on the screen. But let's say when I come back over to my view here, I wanna actually bring this to more of a purple background. So I come back to my app.css file, and when I go ahead and add background color, blue, violet, then let's jump over to the view. Jumping over to the view, we see both of our components are now blue, violet. And instead of just the one that we were trying to scope our CSS styling to inside the component CSS file. Now, if we inspect this, we can see what's going on by clicking, or clicking on the paper itself we see just example paper as the defined class for this paper file from our custom styling. Now, because example paper is what's used as the class name in both of the separate CSS files for these two components, we're gonna see that there's an issue where we're essentially colliding, where the CSS file for the first of our components is actually colliding with the class declaration for the second one and is overloading the background color for both of those. To avoid this, it's fairly simple. We're gonna jump back over to our code and I'm gonna say example button one dot module dot CSS. And from there, I can jump back over to the component itself. I'm gonna change the import statement a, a slightly. Instead of just importing the CSS file, I'm gonna import classes from the CSS file. Coming down to the class name declaration, I'm gonna add some curly brackets. I'm gonna add some angle quotes. And then we're gonna use string interpolation syntax to just bring in classes dot example paper. Now, when we bring in classes.example paper, the modules behind the scene are gonna create a unique string of characters that will be appended to the end of that class name that is going to be dynamically loaded onto our component when we render it for the user. So jumping back over to our view, we now can see that we have one paper with the purple background and one that remains with the white background. And if we inspect, we'll see that this, here's our example button one, underscore example paper underscore random string, which is gonna keep us from colliding with the styling system that's being imported in the second component. We can also use a module in that component to avoid collisions in other parts of the app, but even as it is right now, it's gonna work and it's gonna keep it separate because any CSS styles in this module file are going to be essentially scoped to just that component when it's rendered for the user. And so there you go. We have an easy way to use vanilla CSS for scoped component styling without having any worry about the class names that we use exceed, kind of spreading outside of the component itself and colliding with other components in our application or with other pages in our application and keeping any kind of weird styling behavior from happening. But we also don't have to learn all the syntax of CSS in JSON or in JavaScript and adding the extra level of complexity that that can imply. So I hope this helped and we'll get liked and subscribed for more content like this. I'm hoping to do more videos over the next few weeks and I hope to see you soon.